This instructional companion on vehicle dynamics falls under the major topic dynamics and vibrations which contains the following five chapters. Properties of solid bodies, kinematics, kinetics which is where this instructional companion will come from, mechanisms and power transmission systems, and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinetics covers the many topics shown and in particular we're going to go back to our motion of rigid body uh, equations, of course vehicle dynamics, mostly talks about drag there, skidding and roadway banking, but we're going to be looking at a particular problem, so let's uh, move on. In the MERM, under vehicle dynamics, uh, there's various uh, topics. A level road problem, which essentially is acceleration deacceleration, which is what I'm going to look at here. Uh, other topics, these are all just perfectly done, um, very nice, nicely done, rolling uh, resistance, curve resistance to curve, uh, air resistances, that sort of uh, determination, engine power calculations, braking distance, classic uh, results there for both braking and of course the roadway uh, banking uh, problem. Those are all just fine. But what I want to do is look at the MERM example that has a, um, a truck that is skidding and you're given the deacceleration rate. So let me put that one up here. Okay, save some YouTube time here. The MERM example is uh, a truck uh, that's moving along to the right uh, and it is uh, skidding uh, and you are given that the deacceleration is 15 feet per second squared, so velocity is to the right but A is back to the left. You're given the location of the centroid of the truck, 6 feet, 8 feet. Might have thought that would be the other way around with the engine in the front, but maybe you got a big payload in the back. And the height is 3 feet, so we got 3 feet, 6 feet, 8 feet. And the question here uh, could ask a lot of different questions, but uh, the question here, what is the coefficient of the sliding friction? And I'm going to use um, mu k. I can't warm up to the little script f that he uses, but mu k versus mu s. And uh, what are the forces then uh, at uh, A and B, both friction and normal? A is uh, the, rear, the rear wheel and B is the front wheel. Well, um, you're also given that you have a 5,000 pound mass truck. Well, we're off to a bad start already. Uh, you don't need the pound, okay? I mean the mass, it, this is, it just weighs 5,000 pounds. We don't need the pound mass. If you uh, need a refresher on that, go back to slug versus pound mass there. Okay, let's do a, a free body diagram. That's always the best place to start. Though I hear some of you saying B, B, it's B. Well, that may be for some, but let's be sporting. Okay, here's our uh, free body diagram. At A and uh, B, we've got both the friction force, and these are going to be uh, sliding. They're sliding along, sliding along. And kind of normal force at A, normal force at B. The weight is here at uh, C. Uh, we know where the location, I'm going to put the dimensions anymore. We know uh, where uh, everything is uh, from the figure. We can put that in. Again, I'll show the velocity is going to the right, but it's got a deacceleration to the left. But we'll, we'll um, uh, put that in later. Uh, I've got my coordinate system right up and clockwise moment. Um, I cloud in my coordinate system. I, a student in uh, my first year teaching uh, did that with his coordinate system. I thought that was a great idea and have been doing it ever since. Okay, well, we need uh, the equations of motion, um, both some of the force in x, some of the force in y, and some of the moments. So let's do, let's do those. We'll do those one at a time. Okay, our first equation is some of the force in x equals the mass times acceleration in x. I've just written that out so we know what we're doing here. And the only forces we've got in x are uh, the friction forces, minus f of fa, minus f of fb. So those two uh, to the left equals mass times acceleration in x. Well, the mass is w over g, uh, 5,000 divided by 32.2. And then the acceleration, of course, we make uh, the accelerations in the positive direction, even though when we go to put it in uh, later on, we'll put in a minus 15 feet per second squared. So that's equation number one. Okay, the sum of the force in the y equals mass times acceleration in y, but this only has horizontal motion translation, so acceleration of y is equal to zero, so we've essentially got a statics situation, Na plus Nb minus 5,000 equals zero, that'll be our equation number two. 
Okay, next is taking moments. Okay, and then our third equation is the sum of the moments about some point P is going to be the I about um, P times the alpha, but again, this is pure translation, and so alpha is going to be equal to zero as well. So our right-hand side will be uh, zero. So again, again, we got another sort of a statics. But our only choice is C, uh, because there isn't a fixed point, and there are no points moving towards or away from. Now, if you're looking in the MERM, you'll see that he did take moments at A, uh, but he also did something else. He added uh, or created a new force out of um, of the universe called the inertial force, uh, MA. Well, that is not a force. It has units of force. We make it uh, we make it have units of force by the units we place on mass, but it is not a force. Uh, I will talk about that uh, at the uh, after we work this one out. So we're not going to go that path. So the only choice here was point uh, C, and so when you do, did that, you had the friction forces, uh, both F of FB were um, clockwise with a three-foot moment arm, uh, NA was clockwise with a six-foot moment arm, and NB is counterclockwise back with an eight-foot moment arm. So we've got our th third equation. And now because we're sliding, we can write down our friction equations, so let's do that. Okay, from friction, since we've got sliding, uh, F of FA is the mu K times NA, F of FB is mu K times NB. Of course, here we've assumed that the mu K for both the front wheels and the rear wheels are the same, and uh, that's probably a good assumption anyway, but certainly couldn't have anything other than that on the MEP exam. So we've got is five equations. We've got three equations of motion, two for friction, the rest is algebra, and so let's just do that as quickly as possible here, uh, starting at the top of the next page. Mainly what you want to do is, um, my experience is, let's put the friction in back into the other uh, equations and let's start off with equation number one. Okay, if we substitute uh, the friction forces, F of FA and F of FB in the equation 1, we end up with minus mu K in A minus mu K in B equals uh, W over G times A. Again, A is going to come in as minus 15. Well, uh, look at what we've got here on the left-hand side. Okay, well, if we collect terms, we've got minus mu K times NA plus NB. Well, from 2, equation 2, we have NA plus NB. We've got to add up to 5,000. Let's call that W, because we've got a W up here. You'll see why I'm, I'm going to do that. So let's clean this up. Okay, you can kind of see where I'm going, and, and uh, this happens lots in dynamics. The W goes away, so it doesn't matter how much the truck. Uh, the more general expression, really what you would get is that A is equal to minus mu K G. Um, if you were given mu K and had G, then that would be the uh, deacceleration, or if you're going the other way, we'll talk about that another time. But what we're after here is mu K, so let's just do that. Mu K then is equal to uh, minus A over G. Okay, And so we can now put in our minus and then minus 15 feet per second squared divided by 32.2 feet per second squared and uh, the two minuses we don't have to pencil with the problem okay those go away and you end up with the answer in the MERM I think it's too accurate but we'll carry that along uh, point uh, 4.66 I'd have made it 0.47 but uh, there's the answer okay well, now we can take that and find uh, the other. We still got to find NA and NB. But don't miss the fact that if you're looking for uh, either one of these, this is going to show up many, many times that the acceleration is mu kg, either accelerating or deaccelerating. So um, you can boil this down and, and not have to go through all these steps in the exam. Okay, well, we substituted FA, F of FA, and F of FB into equation 1. Now let's do it into 3. Uh, equation 2, of course, the relationship between, between NA, NB, and W. Well, you can see what's going to happen here. So again, we can pull this together, have mu K times NA plus NB, and we know that's equal to W. But now what we need to do is we've got to uh, uh, eliminate one of the unknowns. It doesn't matter which one. So what I'm going to do is solve for NA in terms of NB. Okay, so from 2, NA is 5,000 minus NB, but again, let's use W, so NA is W minus NB. We can put that in here, and we'll have an equation only in uh, NB and W. 
Okay, so we've got mu k w times the three feet first term, our w minus n b times six feet second term, and n b times eight feet equals zero. Well, I'm going to leave out all the, the algebra here and write down the expression that we're going to get for n b. So again, uh, leaving out all the algebra, you end up with uh, mu k times 3 feet plus 6 feet divided by 14 feet. That sort of coefficient is non-dimensional. Multiply that times w, and you've got nb. Now, this uh, looks uh, complicated, but you know you could go back and put in h for 3 feet. You could use a and b for the separation between c and the front wheel and the back wheel. The 14 feet is the a plus b, or the l between the two. So you could generalize this, and I'll do that later. But uh, let's move on to the next page and actually calculate these out. OK, if we put in our uk that we found, 0.466, the 3 feet, 6 feet, and divide by 14, multiply by 5,000, get 2,642, uh, exactly what's in the MERM. Subtract that from 5,000 and get 2,358, exactly the answer that, they, that the MERM has. Multiply the 0.466 times the NA to get F of FA and get 1,099. We're OK there. And then the 0.466 times 2,642 gives uh, 1,231. So all that works out. Question uh, is, uh, what about this um, inertial force? Well, here, again, to save YouTube time, here is the equation for the sum of, sum of the moments about point A, which, again, I say is not the right uh, point, or at least a, a valid point. You have to assume. You have to assume that uh, counterclockwise is your positive. You have to assume that. Uh, there's no coordinate systems. Well, that's OK. And then the 14, well, they got feet everywhere. But uh, this ought to be uh, 14 feet, which is, of course, the 6 feet and the 8 feet. And got several other terms here. Um, Here's our, we've got 5,000 pound force here, 5,000 pound mass there. No, no, no. Take 5,000 and divide by 32.2 and get, uh, of course, you keep the wind of your calculator, 155.28 slug. And then notice he's put in uh, A, but uh, what happened to the minus sign? OK, well, this is what's called dynamic equilibrium. If on that slide of kinetics, uh, you'll notice it's missing. Um, I do not warm up to that. And uh, where does that come from? Uh, in the little discussion there, it talks about, uh, uh, about that. So let me write that out. In fact, I'm about to run out of YouTube time. So let's do this in a part two. Uh, talk about D'Alembert and his pr principle. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations. 